I thought maths is for mathy people. I thought maths is boring. I, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't relate to the subject. Uh, and I just thought I was playing down, dumb, and stupid. And then time went by, and I eventually finished matric. And I won't lie to you, I just, just passed matric. Especially maths. I just, just made a few marks less. I probably wouldn't have made, made it through maths. Thereafter, I went to study at Taiwan College. Six months later, dropped out. Through, I didn't want to be part of that. Or whatever I was doing over there. Thereafter, I went to UWC. I had to choose my majors. I chose three subjects. The one subject I did not know what it was, but it sounded very cool, anthropology and sociology. I chose the subject because it sounded very cool. Like, what are you studying? Anthropology and sociology. And that ended up being the only subject that I passed of all my subjects. Dropped out again. And then this is the crazy thing. I ended up studying in CPUT and I ended up studying teaching. And a lot of people be like, but you can't study teaching. You, you didn't do well. Yeah? That makes sense. I don't want you to teach my child. Two very interesting things started happening. I started doing better and better in every single test I wrote. And guess what was the subject I majored in? Maths. How I got in there, I don't know. I don't think it was, I was allowed to. I think something went wrong with the admin, but thank God it did. My marks started improving every single test I wrote. And the second incredible thing that happened is, I came across Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. And in a nutshell, it just basically speaks about, there's no singular model of intelligence. The traditional notion of teaching in a traditional way, it's not suffice and it's very limited. Instead, he speaks about we having various, mul um, various intelligences, yeah? visual, auditory, kinesthetic, interpersonal, interpersonal, naturalistic, and that's just to mention quite a few. And then he goes as far as saying, we need to spice up our lessons when we teach our kids. We can't just talk and talk and talk and talk through slap and meetings, and you all know what I'm talking about, it still happens every week. And once I did this, it got me thinking. Was it me? Was I stupid? Or was it my teachers? Was it my teachers' teaching style? Was it my classroom environment? Was it my school? Was it the education system? Did I fall victim to pedagogical discrimination? Maybe, just maybe, it was all these external factors. And maybe it was all these external factors because I started going, but what if I was taught the way that I was created? And what if I was taught according to my strength because pedagogical discrimination is a real thing. I'm playing on your strengths, but I expect you to do as well as the learner over here. And that does not work. So then I set out to create teaching methods and teaching styles and materials that would help kids like me and all my friends that were in my school and kids all across the country that are battling with maths and, and, and a variety of different subjects because it's, it's boring. I can't sit there, I need to move. I probably have kids and family and friends that can't sit still, they want to move, but when they're in their space, they learn really fast. And what helped me in my journey was my, my contribution and my work within the hip hop scene. Now this is the beauty about hip hop. A lot of people have a lot of negative things to say about it. But it's an amazing, it's an amazing culture. The one thing that I loved about it was originality was big. If I enter a dance competition and I do this move, right? The next competition I'll come again, I'll do it again. No go. You cannot win your round or you can't win the battle. Because you have to bring something more original. You have to bring something new to the table. And I took that mentality to my teaching and learning. I have to keep the kids guessing when I teach my lesson like this, I must be able to switch it up, switch it up, switch it up. Because what happens in schools is this. A teacher teaches a lesson, so kids understand. The rest don't get it. So we don't understand, man, what's going on? The teacher tries again, still doesn't work. What does the teacher then do? Oh, you stupid. You dumb. You don't work at home. Yeah? Because when we can't teach you, we label you. Yeah? And you know what the craziest thing is when I start teaching? And I walk into a class full of grade eights, and the kids can't read, man. I'm talking about basic reading. The kids can't read in grade eight. The 
kids got hiding the back, and that breaks my heart. Like guys, after six, seven, eight years of schooling, a kid cannot add and subtract. And then we talk about upward social mobility, and we speak about all these wonderful things, but we need to get the basics right. And and that broke me several times on school grounds. I was going out. I'd, I'd literally I would cry, and I'd be like, "What what are we doing?" Um, so. I'm going to show you that we can teach and serve all our kids. Yeah? We can teach to serve these various learners and we can do it in a cool and funky way that's relevant to our urban contemporary South African youth with the various cultures and all these things. Yeah? And the lesson I'm going to teach and share with you is the multiples, but most specifically the multiples of seven. Okay? And then we're going to see how we're going to fit this into Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. So the first thing we did was we went into the studio because we know that the kids love music. Right? People love music, isn't it? Don't you love music? Music is like a, specifically this hip hop, this funky type of stuff, this upbeat. So we went into the studio, and you can see me, that photo I've got my favorite in the background here. That's my friend Ryan over here, went into the studio. I wanted to get a proper rapper. But I couldn't because you know teacher salaries. <laughs> I couldn't pay someone for that hour or two. It's never gonna work. And we went into the studio and we created the first track, it was called Vanguard, and it's mul the multiple of seven. So we're going to perform the track for you now. And I'm gonna call on to stage, I think this is stage, yeah. Um Seeker and Tile, he was in my class in grade eight at the stage, and we're going to show you how we do the multiple of seven using music for the kids. And you know the kids learn the lyrics just like that, isn't it? They know the song, but yet we don't, don't do it in class. So let's just take that magic and use it in the class. Tika, you can come down, give her, give her a Tika a round of applause. Multiples of seven. Multiples of seven. Multiples of seven. Check it out. Here we go. Seven, 14. 35, 91, 91, multiples of seven. Woo! Education. Yeah! Thank you. And I promise you, within minutes, within minutes, the kids could go, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 50, come on, sir. And they add the other beat. I just want to show you what I was in Mokoko about two weeks ago, and I did the multiples of nine with him over there, so you can kind of see what the class looked like. Oh, we need a completely different province. 9, 
Two things, what I was saying with the thing, the representation is a kid can now take it, they can wrap it and the kid can go, what's 7 times 3? 7, 14, 21. And they can use the finger, right? And when we dance, when we have choreography set, the kid can go, 7, 14, 21, 28. The fourth move, 7 times 4 is 28. Can you see how we're creating different ways for kids to learn the same to work? And that's what we are supposed to do. Um, and, and just before I go, I want to say this, like, we as teachers and, and, and parents, and we really need to get to know our kids. Because once we know what they love, we connect what we want to teach them to what they love. And then in that way, we will really get them excited and interested in what we're doing. So, I'm wearing this top. What image do you guys see on this top? Headphones, no business, liquor. The liquor top, teachers can't wear these to school. Usually they say, so you must wear a suit. Like, you know, I've been in the office so many times. Yeah, and then I kept dressing like this, they eventually just looked at me like this. And I just thought, this is not for me, this is for the kids, the kids love this now. Okay, so if you look close at this image, I'm going to pop the image up here. Ooh, what is that headphones made of? What? It's, it's numbers, yeah? Which numbers? Multiples of seven. So, Professor Christopher Emden from Columbia University in the States, he says that we need to use clothing and artifacts like graffiti to start conversations with the learners because this opens a portal for us to take our lesson to the next level, isn't it? We first build this interest and I can start my lesson by saying, what do you like wearing? Oh, so I like my shirt or my this. That's cool. What do you like wearing? What do you, and then we build the conversation around fashion first and then we take it to what we want to teach them. And the beauty is when we get to the questions, I explain the first four methods. The kid can now use this image to navigate the way to the answer. Because you see there's a pattern, right? So they'll go seven, four, so what's seven times five? Seven, 14, 21, 28. So they can rap or they can use any of this. So now I'm giving, I'm, when I take the kids through the ecosystem of how to teach, how to learn the multiples, they have choices and once they get through all of it, they know their multiples like this, I promise you. Some of you are gonna go home today going seven, 14, 21, 28. <laughs> get to you. So now what happens is, you know you need that learner, you wanna sit down for them to test it. Let me do this. Oh yeah, sorry. Here's the top. That's the multiples of three top at one of our events. My bad. So it looks, it's dope, huh? It looks like a bridges math and art. Okay, my time. Okay. It bridges that, so what happens is, a lot of times in school, I, like I feel like school sometimes and subjects is the apartment of subjects. Man. I feel like that. Because we always show them what it is separately. We never show them what it looks like when it comes together. Yeah? And the sum of the parts is greater than the parts itself. But we never show them that. We, they leave with just subjects, subjects, subjects. But if you look at the tables, it's math, science, design, everything in one. Cool. Here we go. <coughs> so now we teach them how to, now they want to sit down and do it. Can you see how beautiful and colorful this is? You can see that multiplication is repetitive addition. Yeah? You can see the seven times two equals seven plus seven, but they can use the image, they can use the music, they can use the video, they can use the fingers and they can dance. That's one lesson. That's one lesson. So we have options. So can you guys see that we can bring life to Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences? Now just stepping outside of the multiplication, I want to just show you what else we've created because I've, I've now figured out how to teach kids to add and subtract without talking, purely dance. And that's beautiful. But look at this. Isn't this what a 360 degree circle looks like in most textbooks or wherever you go, yeah? Yes? That's freak boring. <laughs> like, I don't, I, I, that is, like when I, because when I go on, when the kids go on Facebook and they watch PS TV and all these things, aren't the images beautiful? It's aesthetically pleasing, but when they come to school, there's this disconnect. When you watch the videos, it's boring, but when we go into the outside world, it's beautiful. So, isn't this a bit more tasty? Look at the adults going, you. Yeah. <laughs> and the kid goes, oh, sir, maybe look at that, sir, yours, sir. Huh? And you guys die, it's hard of you. Yeah. So can you guys see that? So there is a variety of ways of teaching these subjects. Elon Musk is sending rockets to space. We've got 
can figure out how to teach, teach one lesson in 15 ways. Come on, it is possible and we must do it. So, in closing, I believe that we can teach and serve all of these needs. We can create perfectly inclusive classrooms. I believe that every kid counts and we all have gifts and all our kids are special and we should serve them because we, we really need to serve them by our special stature. I believe in our gardeners theory of multiple intelligences and I believe that it's possible. What does the future look like for me? In short, schools become a space that kids really live their lives and they're excited to be and we help them find their gifts and we teach them the way they should be learned because when we do that, they will soar and they will fly. Thank you very much. I'm